All right, friends, welcome to Architect Interview Question Series from Knowledge Powerhouse. Let's go on to our next question. Question is, what is the use of Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is like, uh, it's a generic question that we have put and it's mainly we'll be dealing what exactly is Kubernetes and why do we use it? And like in software architecture, what are the components where Kubernetes can be put? What are the benefits that we get out of it, right? So we'll try to cover these in detail. So in short, Kubernetes is a container orchestration system. So there are three terms here, container, orchestration, and system. So we have container. So there is a video that we covered on container and Docker. So container is like a very popular trend that we use our binaries and applications as a container rather than independent jar files. So Kubernetes is needed to orchestrate those containers. Like containers are required to run your application, but then we need something to run the containers also, which is like, I mean, if you want to manage the containers, you can use Kubernetes. Why do we need it? Because at times we need like scalability and all. So those scenarios, we have to use Kubernetes. So I'll give you some example. So in this case, if you see there is a Kubernetes master, and that is controlling different replication and there are different nodes node one node two and in each node you have pods and pods have containers so this is a very high level architecture of kubernetes so you have a master that can control how many replicas you need like if you want your uh, like let's say 10 containers to run if you not want like five containers to run like you want to replicate them you can use the master to replicate it and these uh, replication will on the multiple nodes and on each node you have pods and within a pod you can have multiple containers so try to understand this diagram it will be very helpful for you when you describe it during some interview right you have a master node pod and then container this is how it is distributed and there are three main uses of the uh, kubernetes first use is automation of applicant application deployment so you can deploy your application in automated way when you use kubernetes so container is like you created a container but you need some form of deployment to deploy that container to a node right so kubernetes can be helpful in automation of that second is that once you have automated your deployment now if you need scaling like you need more servers right so your service has high demand so in that case you need scaling up for more servers if you have already like automated the deployment then you can scale up also like you can ask kubernetes and it can create more like you know servers to and deploy them to those servers right and the third one is automation of management of application which means like if your application uh, needs to be scaled down or it some configuration has to be changed across all of those uh, like uh, servers then Kubernetes can pass it on. So basically, by server, I mean the containers, right? So in each container, you have some instance of your service running, right? So that way, Kubernetes can serve all these three purposes. Let's go back into the history. Originally, Kubernetes was designed at Google, and when they used, tried Kubernetes to serve so many, like billions of queries, search queries that you use, that was served using Kubernetes, then they moved on to like you know open source and once it became open source it started getting maintained by another organization called cloud native computing foundation so nowadays cloud native computing foundation is the one that is managing uh, kubernetes and supporting it let's understand different objects in the kubernetes so this is again a high level like diagram of kubernetes where we have a developer and then developer or operator devops person and then they deal with the kubernetes master within the master you have an api server so api server is the one that provides the apis then you have a controller manager and scheduler so api server provides these apis for these controller manager as well as scheduler and hcd for configuration management and then downstream you have multiple nodes so in each node you have a kubelet like every node has one kubelet then you have some kind of a C advisor and some Q proxy. Then you have multiple ports, pods in a Kubernetes node. 
So we'll go into detail of these objects. So at high level, these are the seven objects that we'll cover: node, pod, replica set, kubelet, Kubernetes master, volume, and config map. Right? Let's go into detail of each of these objects. So first basic unit is the pod. So pod, like say internally, if you see, uh, your container is the one which is deployed on a pod. So pod is the basic execution unit of a Kubernetes application. This is the smallest and simplest unit in object model of Kubernetes. And that can be created or deployed or even destroyed, right? And the pod represents like a process that is running on your cluster. So within a pod, your service is running. So a container is deployed to the pod. And pod will encapsulate an application's container, storage resources, and unique network identity like IP address, as well as the options, like config options, that will govern how the container should run. So all of these three, four things are within the pod. Like what is the application we are running, like the container, any storage that is needed by the container, the IP address, how like through network you can reach there, and some configurations. Right, so and then you can have multiple thousands of pods that can be run. Second uh, object is node. So a node is a worker machine. Like you actually need some hardware machine, right? Like on which all these pods will run. So that worker machine is known only to the Kubernetes. So in that worker machine, like uh, we have uh, multiple pods. So this machine can be either a VM or it can be a physical machine. Right? So it can be a virtual machine or it can be a physical machine on which different parts are installed. Now this node, earlier term for node was minion, but now it's node. So depending on the kind of cluster, you have a VM or physical machine, and each node will have the services that are required to run the parts. It will have some kind of a memory, some kind of a CPU, some servers. Then all these things will be managed by a master components. Right, Kubernetes master will manage all these things on a node. And within node, you have components, right? And in each node, you have a kubelet also. We'll cover the kubelet next. Then we have a replica set. The purpose of replica set is to maintain a stable set of replica pods uh, that are running at any given time. So it will maintain how many replicas are running. And we should just uh, use it as a guarantee that this is the specified number of pods that will be available to run, right? So that is the purpose of replica set that we have replicated our pods across multiple nodes and that is a replica we have. Then we have a kubelet. Kubelet is an important concept. It's like a small piece of software and that is running on each node. So there's one instance of kubelet on each node and the kubelet is the one which is used for communicating with the master and it's more like an agent, right? So it can register the node with the API server. So if you had a new node, then uh, Kubelet will inform API server that, okay, this new node has been added and it can use the host name or a flag to override the host name or some any other logic to specify that this is the node I'm taking care of. So, no, so master Kubernetes master will come to know about a node via Kubelet. Then we have Kubernetes master. So Kubernetes master is central thing. There's like only one Kubernetes master. And then in that Kubernetes master, we have a collection of some processes. Mainly there are three processes and these are the processes that manage your cluster. Okay. So first is Kube API server, which is like API server of Kubernetes. And that provides API interface to internals of Kubernetes as well as to the nodes. nodes. Then we have Kube Controller Manager. So Controller Manager helps in controlling different nodes and Kube Scheduler, which helps in schedule, scheduling different kind of uh, like loads on the different Kubernetes nodes. So all these are the three main processes within the Kubernetes master. And master communicates uh, to each of the node via kubelet. Then we have another concept of volume. So it is not shown over here, but volume is within each uh, like you know, node. So on disk files in a container are ephemeral. So ephemeral means like, you know, if a container goes down, then that files will go. Like, you know, container will not be able to access it, right? So whenever a container crashes, kubelet will restart it, right? It can restart that container, but uh, the files will be lost. Right. So because container is starting from a clean state. 
secondly like if we run together containers uh, in a pod then they may need to share some files between those containers okay. so in such a case we use kubernetes volume which is an abstraction that will solve this problem it will provide you some kind of a mechanism for the storage part right i mean you do not have a hard drive specific to each container but kubernetes volume is the one which says that okay to so this container this kind of storage i'm providing right so using that volume even if your container crashes the new container can access those so that way it, this problem is solved so this will abstract to solve these problems then last we are covering config map so config map is again a master uses this so it is an api object that will be used to store non-confidential data in key value pairs so the pods can consume config map and master can like you know modify it now this config map contains information like environment variables command line arguments or configuration files in a volume so all these things is in form is like stored in a config map and using config map you can decouple the environment specific configuration from your container images so that your applications are easily portable like you create a application and then all the information that is required is in config map and via api server this information can be modified and updated into different parts so in short a pod is the basic scheduling unit in kubernetes pod may contain one or more containers and those are co-located on a machine and each pod will have a unique pod ip address in a cluster so that you can access it then the pod ip address is ephemeral like if pod goes down it will like change so it doesn't mean that it will remain same even after the restart now let's go on to understand what are the different functions uh, kubernetes serves and like these are the different uses of kubernetes first is service discovery so kubernetes can be used to discover services like if you have a new service uh, which is provided by a container you can use kubernetes to provide it and container can expose like using a dns name or own ip address via kubernetes so new users can access it then we have load balancing so since like uh, kubernetes is in the middle like of all these parts so it can balance the load let's say there are a high number of requests the kubernetes can either distribute it across the overall cluster or it can even scale up the cluster to install like start more nodes and more pods that way load can be handled automatically then comes storage orchestration so in this case uh, if we have a like local storage or hard drive or from public cloud you are getting like something like s3 so all the storage can be managed by kubernetes so that different pods and containers can access to storage via volumes then we have automated rollouts and rollbacks so whenever like there we are deploying so we can roll out new features using kubernetes to production and it can also perform health check and see if there is an issue that it can roll back also right and it can create new containers like if you want scalable thing we want to scale up the cluster it can create new containers deploy them and if it needs like scale out like i mean we want to scale down our cluster then it can remove the existing containers also which are not being used then comes self-healing so if there is a failure in a container then you don't need to like you know employ people to start it Kubernetes can itself restart those containers that fail. It can replace the failed containers. It can even kill the containers that fail the health check so that you save on resources. And last but not the least, Kubernetes also helps in secret and configuration management, which means like sensitive information like passwords, authorization tokens, SSH keys, all this sensitive information can be automatically updated by kubernetes in the containers so you don't need to like manually update this information you can make use of config maps and this configuration management to update this information in thousands of containers think of it it used to be such a tedious task or like error prone task now with kubernetes you have automated all this so it helps in maintaining security and like we are not exposing these secrets in the stack configuration it's all like within the configuration cube master right all right that's all on kubernetes from our side i hope uh, you got some clarification on the uses of kubernetes if you still have more questions or any comments or any feedback do share with us in feed comment section 
will be helpful and we can cover more topics in the future thank you everyone and do subscribe to this channel if you are interested in learning more thanks and have a great day